Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to welcome you all to the Sunday service of the People's Church of Divine Prophecy. Please silence your cell phones unless you're medical or law enforcement personnel. <laughs> People that aren't familiar with the building, the restrooms are down the hall that way, quick right, quick left, and they'll be right out. Cold drinks in the fridge, hot drinks on the table, some donuts and treats back there, help yourself at any time during the service. I'd like to have Valerie light the candles to start the service. Father God, we give thanks for this moment here today. May we relax our minds, be here now, and feel that which is here for us today from your divine love and the love of those that have come to share that. May we feel true peace and harmony while we're here. Amen. Amen. In the gold pages, hymn number nine, I'll fly away. Got a big hallelujah <laughs> <laughs> Some black boy in this life is over. I'll fly away. To that one part to your shore. I'll fly away. Sometimes they say, well, that's not spiritual. Well, I can uh, 
pretty much guarantee you that uh, at one time in my life, there's a lot of people that if they saw these videos today of me standing up there saying spiritual things, they'd say, that can't be the same guy. It just isn't possible. So when they say I'm acting unspiritual, they really don't know the nature of what I got and what I can be if I choose to be. So um, I take that in stride. That's their assertion of who I am and what I am. There's an old spiritual saying that says, what you think of me is none of my business. And that's another way to keep yourself focused and on track. You know, Deepak Chopra says, you know, be, have self-referral, don't have outside referral. Don't let people and circumstances control you. Once you realize the truth of what's going on, regardless of how hurtful it is or how difficult it is, you have all truth that you're calling and command. So facing a difficult truth frees you up to have all of the other truths to work with you to solve the situation you're in. Sometimes that's a hard one to face things as they are, to move past them. A lot of hopes and wishes and efforts go into helping people be something that they're just never going to be. And at some point you just have to acknowledge that, let go of it, and let them move on. Hard to do when it's family and you really care about them. But God's working with that person as strong as God's working with you. So you have to allow God's plan to unfold because the other side of that coin is if you keep interfering with God's plan for that person by helping them or protecting them from the consequences of their decisions, pretty soon you're going to find yourself unable to be involved with that person. God's power will make it to where you can't help. Your money will get less to where you can't help. Your time will become occupied with other things where you can't help. Or you would just have something happen to you where you are just not able to be involved there anymore. So take a free choice. Let God work with that person before you get removed from it by whatever happens. And be satisfied with knowing that you've done everything you can do. Moderation. Has to have moderation in physical things as well as spiritual things. So just you know, don't go to, don't become the, the uh, don't become the one that wants to be sacrificed for doing good deeds. Don't become a martyr. Stay being a person and stay healthy. Thank you for listening. Please stand for the next one. In the gold pages, hymn number 11, Peace Like a River. I got peace like a river.
prayer for spiritual healing on the back. I don't seem to have a hymn on here, so I'm probably going to mess it up. So carry me through. I ask the great unseen healing force to remove all obstructions from my mind and body and to restore me to perfect health. I ask this in all sincerity and honesty, and I will do my part. I ask this great unseen healing force to help both present and absent ones who are in need of help and to restore them to perfect health. I put my trust in the love and power of God. Ask is going to lead us in the guided meditation. We need Judy and Lorraine to do the healing today and Ashton will chair the service for the rest of the service because I'm going to be doing the lecture. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Get ready for the meditation. <clears throat> Find a comfortable uh, position to sit. <clears throat> straight on the ground, arms up in your lap, just sit comfortably, so your body is relaxed, taking a few deep breaths.
while you read, repeat to yourself quietly. I am at peace within and without. along with your breath. Throughout your entire body, your mind, your spirit. Feel the peaceful flow of your breath. That is nourishing, nurturing your entire body. You are meant to be at peace always. Embrace this peaceful aspect of your being. Just be still. Like a beautiful lotus with multiple petals opening up. As you look deeper to the core of your heart, you will find your essence. presence of God within your heart. God is love. Love is your essence. As you connect with your heart, the flow of rose pink energy flowing from the core of your heart. The energy of unconditional love flowing throughout your entire body from within and without. Embracing you, comforting you, healing you. Feel the with your sacred heart. 
feel the presence of God in your heart. Feel God's everlasting love that is present within your heart, within your soul. Love is power. Love is evil. Let go of emotions of anger, frustration, pain, hurt. See all these emotions dissolving into this unconditional love energy. Feel the power of this love that is capable of healing anyone any situation, including yourself. Feel this love energy bubbling and expanding around you. And feel the flow of this love energy from your heart. Think of someone that needs love and healing at this time. If you know anyone that is going through hardship, hard times, if you know anyone that you are in conflict with, any relationship that you are not able to heal, And know that love is powerful here. Direct this love energy from your heart to that person, to that situation. Intent for healing. And believe in your heart that healing is taking place. Surrender to your sacred heart. Have a forgiving heart. It is only through love we are able to forgive. And through forgiveness, we are able to heal. the thoughts will be of kind and gentleness. See with your heart. For you will see the beauty, the reflection of the essence of each soul. Listen with your heart. For you will have the compassion and understanding. Feel with your heart. For it is your ultimate truth. The power within your soul and spirit. 
Feel the love in your heart. Infinite. Everlasting. Feel this love energy extending to the person next to you. Feeling this entire room. See this love energy with your mind's eye moving out, gently flowing, carrying the vibrations of love and healing. See it extending out to the earth, to the universe. See this love energy embracing Mother Earth, humanity everywhere. As it moves, it heals, it shifts the vibrations towards love and compassion and harmony. See this love energy circulating and spreading everywhere.
let there be love, Father. Let it begin with us. Let there be light on earth that begin with us. Let there be peace on earth that it begin with us. And so it is. Feel your peaceful breath bringing you back slowly. to the here and now. When you're ready, you can open your eyes. Please rise for the next one. Hymn number 10, Amazing Grace. <clears throat> <clears throat>
Today's lecture is going to be about uh, virtue and the opposing forces to that in our lives. You ever wake up one morning and just wonder what the heck I would do if I could just not have any responsibilities left and just do whatever I wanted to do? What do you think you would do? Yes. I don't have to do anything but what I want to do. You probably end up in a few months being doing just about what you're doing now again because your nature is your nature. <laughs> you may as get yourself back in the same situations you're in right now with probably with different people. In spiritualism, we're taught personal responsibility of our actions and corrective action through knowledge and wisdom is how we proceed and accept conditions that we find ourselves in. Once we realize the source of a situation and accept our part in it, we can then free ourselves from that situation if we so choose. We have to accept our part, no other part. You can't accept the whole responsibility for everything that's there. Thought at one time was if you saw the, the, somebody that was enslaving somebody, you felt pity for the one being enslaved. Natural law teaches us that there is that within both of, both of their natures that cause this situation. It's not one forcing the other. There is a naturalness to what draws those two together. Now to say that we shouldn't be abhorred by those kinds of situations is incorrect. To say that we can't have gratitude without having a plan to move forward is also incorrect. Be grateful for what you have, but still have a plan to move forward. When I talk about virtue, there's much more to it than the things that we normally think about, the hope, the love, the happiness. These terms create thought patterns within our minds. They move our minds into concepts rather than just words. And when we think these concepts, we go to a certain part of our being that those, con that those concepts resonate in. The higher-minded concepts love, hope, happiness, and peace, and fair treatment of others exist in the higher part of our nature, the spiritual nature. When we think those thoughts and draw to those concepts, that's what we bring out into our lives. This is the spiritual part of us that has been put there by God. This is the part of us that works with us to the spirit realm. This is what moves us forward and keeps us moving forward. There's an old term about people feeling that they're sliding back. That might be in perspective to where they're at, but where they come from, that's not true. Because once you move out of where you come from, you never go back there. There's a natural law of the spiritual evolution. And as time moves forward, we're all drawn inextricably towards that source which created us. We're all drawn inextricably back to the source that we came from. But if you liken it to a stream running down a hillside, if you look at that stream, the center of it's moving swiftly and fewer, surely back to its source. As you move further and further outward, the different parts of the stream are moving slower and slower until you look at the very edges where it looks like the water is running back on itself in eddies and in circles seemingly going nowhere. If you liken humanity to that in our lives, those that are connected to God with a plan for forward action, embracing the spiritual values, are like those in the center of the stream, moving swiftly and surely back to the force, using every opportunity and all potentials of that God force within our lives to move ourselves forward spiritually. And as you move further out, those are people that are still deciding, some sitting on the fence, some kind of getting their foot, feet wet and moving along. And as you get to the outer edges where it looks like the water's running back on itself and just spinning in circles, when you look closer at that, even that water moves out and down the stream. So when we run into people like that that seem to be going nowhere, that seem to be stuck where they're at, you have to realize that that force of God is moving them forward whether they're consciously involved or not. 
and that's what I spoke about in my thought for the day. You have to recognize that God's moving that person through the conditions of their lives just as surely as God's moving you through the conditions of your lives. All you can do is aid that person into making decisions or give that person a second view of what's going on. You can't make them do anything. Them in their own time through the power of God will move their lives forward. If you give them a second thought or a second opinion, sometimes that gives them something else to think about when they're stuck in that circular thought. Our minds are kind of odd about one thing. They can only hold one vibration of thought at a time, consciously. All thought comes from the same part of your mind. If you're thinking happy and joyous thoughts, that's what you think and that's what you draw to. If you think fearful thoughts or limiting thoughts, that's what resonates in your mind. Everything you see, everything that comes into your view is of that nature. That's your perception of it. So when we give somebody an alternate view, perhaps that breaks them out of that thought pattern. Perhaps that breaks them out of that vibration of thought that's in their mind. Truth, when spoken fairly and equitably, has that effect. Truth that's spoken like a club does not have that effect or used as a threat. It's how it's presented to that person a lot of the time. The opposing force to the higher self in our own lives is the instincts and the lower emotions. That of hatred, of fear, of wanting to keep more than what's ours, of trying to manipulate people. These are all parts of the lower part of the body, the lower part of our existence, the animal instincts. What separates us from all other animals on this planet is our ability to imagine, our ability to have concepts in our minds about things we have not seen or heard. And that's where the spirit works with us, giving us concepts about things we have not experienced, allowing us to have that thought of something that we have not seen. Allowing us to hear something from somebody about something we don't know. And allowing the spirit to cause us to imagine what that would be like. So with this lower emotion, there is no imagination. When we're stuck in that, in that mode, no imagination exists. It takes an earthly person of doing, acting out of love to help them start that imagination again. And when we think of something in our lives, a spiritual principle that we want to embrace, we're imagining something that we have not experienced. We're thinking about what that would do for us. We're projecting our mind through imagination into the future about what that will do for us. So again, spirit-guided imagination. That's how we move beyond where we're at. Imagining doesn't mean it's false or that it's fake. It means that it's something that we have not experienced and we are trying to get a concept of what it's like. The instincts and the lower emotions have managed to hybrid themselves together over the centuries as we have evolved as, a, as an animal within this environment. It's the first level that we've reacted to the world and justifiably so in many cases, back in the earlier days when we were a tribal civilization, the tribe and the, and the group was the important one. So all of our actions were to support that. As we moved into modern society, we have become individuals with individual purposes and individual paths. So I, our identity has gotten much stronger and much more self-defined by itself without groups. But there's still that within us that desires that group recognition, that group consciousness at times. But we have that individual now, that individual consciousness of who we are and what we are. The problem with this is that it has attached itself to the instincts as we have evolved into that individual person. And when somebody attacks us verbally, we react as if we're being physically attacked. If somebody attacks the idea of who we are or what we believe, sometimes it gets pretty heated. And that's because the instincts are reacting in a mode of survival. 
trying to make who you are and what you are and what you think you are survive through this apparent assault. So this is what we struggle with when we try to bring spiritual thoughts into our lives and into our minds. The good side of all this, even though that you've got millions of years of genetics and instincts, is that an effort done to the good is first off permanent. Second off, that same effort is ten times greater than if it were applied to the lower nature. The lower nature is very dense and it takes a lot of effort to stay mad about something. It takes a lot of effort to stay in a space that is not spiritual for you. And it takes a continual effort to stay like that. A real determination to stay like that. Whereas if that same effort is applied to a better expression of yourself, it shifts you permanently and it shifts you in a direction much greater than having to be constantly reinforced. Once you take a step in a spiritual direction, it's there. It's always there. Your consciousness of it is always there. So these are some of the things that I would ask you to think about. There are natural drawings within our lives, physically as well as spiritually, that we don't really understand why we're drawn that way. It's in our genetics from the physical side, and it's in our spiritual nature by our spiritual contract or our spiritual walk that we've agreed to do here. And sometimes they clash. Sometimes it just doesn't seem fair. Like I said, sometimes we wake up and just say, gee, I wish I didn't have any responsibilities. Gee, I wish I was just completely free. And that brings me back to a saying when I was trying to sober up at one time in my life, and I am still sober. I haven't had a drink since I was 35. But we were asked in a develop, I call it a development circle, but it was the way that they help you get past those urgings is actually a spiritual development circle, but they don't call it that. They call it meetings. And that the guy heading it up said, what's the worst thing that could ever happen to you in your life that's going on now? What's the worst thing you can think of that would ever happen to you for your betterment or for your detriment? Everybody come up with all these things. Oh, death, injury, fear, enslavement, being put in jail. And he says, the answer is real simple. It's nothing. If nothing happened to you in your life, you would stay exactly the same as you are from now to the day you quit breathing. And what a sad statement that would be. Absolutely nothing is the worst thing. So here you are waking up wishing for the worst thing that could happen to you. <laughs> nothing going on in my life. So we need to kind of look at these challenges with a set of eyes as its opportunity. God brings all things to us. Spirit, whether you believe there's intermediaries between you or God or directly with God, that's your choice. Either way, the dynamics are the same. What's brought to you and brought before you is for you and your spiritual development. If you're brought to somebody at a difficult time in their life and you end up being the brunt of that difficulty, that's the role that you've been asked to play in that. Now, I'm not saying put yourself in a position where you're abused or taken advantage of, but don't fear getting involved in something that seems to be difficult. You're there for a reason. You have all the capabilities you need. You're not going to be put in a situation or find yourself challenged with something that you don't have the powers to overcome. The whole purpose of that situation is realizing that power, not necessarily the resolution of the situation. It's realizing that power and utilizing it. The results sometimes are not what you think they're going to be for yourself or for others. But you have to be satisfied with those results and take credit for the results you have. Be grateful for the results that you have. And take time to be silent and think about God in your life. Whether you call it silent contemplation, whether you call it prayer, take time. Don't only call on God when you're in trouble or in dire straits. 
keep God and Spirit a part of your life every day. Start it with that. My daughter, who's now in her 30s, when she was a little girl, she brought home this thing from school that they'd written up. And she was about five years old and it said, the first hour of my day is the rudder for my life. So you need to think about that. Start your day right, and the rest of the day may fall completely to pieces. But if you start the day right, you've brought God in, and that's what you need to do at the beginning of each day. Take time, and if, even if you're in difficult times, I know a lot of people that are going through really challenging times spiritually with illnesses, with illnesses that can become terminal, with illnesses that are terminal. I counsel a lot of people, and it's, it's very challenging to tell people to do that when you haven't been there. You know, how do you know that you can do that when you're sitting there? And that's something you have to realize when you're interacting with these people. You're speaking about things, again, through your imagination that you have not experienced through the urging of Spirit and God to say to that person. You may not have experienced that, but you're an emissary of the higher-mindedness in that situation, and you will speak beyond your experiences through your imagination, through the inspiration of God, as if you had done it. So allow yourself that grace when you're interacting that way. Don't feel limited. Engage with the personal challenge. Engage with the challenge from someone else that comes to you. But do it through spirit. Do it with hope. And do it with kindness. As I get ready to close, I just want you to just take a moment in the here and now to just relax your mind and feel the spirit that's within this room. All of the people that are here, all of the intentions of the people that are here to connect to that God within. Surely the God within is here for all of us. We can feel that wonderful presence all around us, with us, a comfort. God at rest, the true nature of God, feeling the true potential of God is God at rest within you and around you. As you feel that, realize you can feel this at any moment of the day, at any time you choose, and it will better a situation no matter what it is. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you.